So it's day three and I just had the most amazing walking meditation. I haven't been doing any of these videos because I've been just enjoying the actual chorus. However, I don't want to forget this one. I don't want to forget any of them, but this one specifically, I really don't want to forget. So um, yeah, it was pretty awesome. We were in Niagara Falls and we, the American side, and we started on the grass, just tuning into our breath, tuning into the void, tuning into the space, which is amazing, uh, getting lost in it. And then we started tuning into our energy centers, one, four, six, then eight, which would be the root, heart, third eye, and the above. And um, things started to move and shake very fast. When I opened my eyes, I was in a trance and I just started walking because you walk in this meditation. You open your eyes and you walk with the intentions of who you want to be, who you are. And it was amazing. It was so good. I'm so grateful for all the staff of the Doja Fenza. When people are like, oh, but why is it so expensive? Oh, but they keep you safe. Like I had multiple staff people catching me before I fell, catching me before the energy knocked me back. Um, I've had multiple episodes on this walk where if I had been alone or if there hadn't been as much staff as they have, I would have been probably injured. <laughs> so I'm extremely grateful to the Dr. Joe Dispenza team for taking care of me so well. And I'm extremely grateful, sorry, switching hands, it gets tired after all. Extremely grateful to Dr. Joe for all the like energy he puts into the work because you can feel it when you're doing the work and he helps you almost get on like a spiritual highway getting to where you're trying to get with the uh, energy centers. And it was pure bliss, pure bliss, connected with the divine, connected with everything and everyone around me. And um, yeah, the lying down part at the end where after you do, you do the tuning in, you walk, then you stop, you tune in again. And that's just like shooting energy from your root chakra all the way up and you're knocking back. And it's insane, it's truly insane. And uh, yeah, then we got to lie down and it was just like drifting away and you're nowhere and no one and it's still you're in that space and I don't want to leave when I'm there. I, I, I'm honest. I just love it in there now. And you're playing in the space of beauty and gorgeousness. And when I open my eyes, there is one thing that I used to get a lot in Cancun and in London when I meditate, I don't do walking meditations or I'm not outside. As soon as I opened my eyes, I could see all the particles. I could see all the particles in the air. I can't see it for objects yet, but you know the atoms that they talk about, the vibrations of atoms and all that that they talk about? Ooh, that's the fan just coming on. Ooh, giving me the Beyonce look. <laughs> but you know those atoms they talk about where they like, they, they flicker? I could see them all flickering. And at one point I could see, like I had, I wanted to touch them, but if you put your hand, they disappear and the moment you take away they start flickering again it's just so cool just so cool anyway amazing meditation day three don't want to end but you know everything changes this will too shall pass but i just wanted to share in the moment in the present moment yeah ciao see you soon and we're back back to day four of my personal journey in the dr joe Dispenza niagara falls week-long retreat in september 2022 which i'm representing with my shirt um this is day four of the week long and i will be sharing the three my experience in the three meditations that we did that day we start the day with a walking meditation number six I don't want to forget this one. I was moved into life. I got to be present and play with the energy, although some of it I can't even remember. I think I blacked out for some moments. We walked to the bridge in Niagara Falls. I was so, so excited to start. I was giggity and jiggly laughing the whole time. I found a spot and stood by a tree on the grass turn on the meditation and pull down my blindfold. He had a start by breathing into the void and got lost deeper and deeper into this void. Then the music changed and we started tuning into the energy center number one, 
number four, six, and eight, and feeling the four centers all together, pulling one into four, four into six, six into eight. That got the body really excited and shakety. Tuning in put me into a trance. Ooh, I remember this. In the first walking meditation, I got straight into a trance, which I was shocked. So when I opened my eyes, I walked the walk while the body would shoot from one to eight and knock me back. So I'm like walking, literally walking, and I'm like, uh -huh. <laughs> which I love. I think it's really fun. And I know it's not a game. It's not, but it's fun. I had a volunteer next to me with her arms out to catch me when I opened my eyes because he has you first stop, close the eyes, do the meditation, then you open your eyes and you walk. And I'm walking around in a trance along the Niagara Falls. And then I close my eyes again. And when I open my eyes, um, he tells us to walk in power, in love, in our future self. I'm trying, but I'm still stumbling and struggling to walk in a straight line as one, four, six, and eight keep shooting up and knocking me back. It feels insanely good and I can feel I'm about to leave my body, but I get scared and I push my air out. I take a deep exhale and push my hands down to try and ground myself and find my stableness. I do it a few times, I remember. I also remember being held and caught by a volunteer once or twice. We then stop to close our eyes and tune into a second time. Back bending like nobody's business at this point, and when I reopen my eyes, my chest is puffed out a lot more. I feel like a giant and I'm stumbling as if I was drunk. It does feel amazing. I am sweating from all the shaking, but I don't really care. I'm in this moment and I don't want to leave it. I then connect to the sky and the clouds and feel like I'm flying. <laughs> All of a sudden, a strong wind comes towards me and I feel like I'm being lifted by the divine, by the divine beings to bring me closer to the sky. One last time with our eyes closed and then boom, we lay down. I was in the void the whole time. So when the meditation ended and Dr. Joe called us back, I didn't want to go back. I stayed in the void. I worked myself back into the void. I talked to myself to stay there for a little longer while lying on the wet grass, grass because it had been raining the whole time, just sprinkling, but it was wet on the floor. When I opened my eyes, I could see all the particles in the sky and the air, these twinkling lights vibrating super fast. So this is like what Dr. Joe talks about, the energy, the atoms, and I could see it. I tried to play with it to touch the little energy centers. they disappear and then they would reappear. It was super cool. When I stood up from this meditation, I had to rest onto a pole and then I went to hug a lady near me. I don't know why, I just looked at her and I felt the need to hug her. Turns out she was the volunteer looking after me her name was Lisa, or her name is Lisa. <laughs> she told me how beautiful and strong my energy was radiating and that they had multiple volunteers this morning having to look after me at some points. It was so good to know I was safe the whole time. And it was so good to have such a beautiful experience to start my day. So yeah, maybe I'm oversharing. I don't know. I don't know if I'm oversharing, but it's quite intense and I love it and it's it's releasing it's releasing blockages of energies it's opening up it's tuning in and all that is beautiful so yeah that was amazing so then we had our lectures we had our lunch and then we did our second meditation of the day which was tuning into three potentials I tune into the heart to start, which I love, as it puts me in such an open and loving space. Then the breath work to start pulling the mind out of the body. I also love this part too, and sometimes wish we could do more than just five to six rounds because that's when I'm just starting, I'm just getting started. The arousal and the excitement is insane, and every time I hit the pineal gland, it's an explosion in the brain. We then went straight into the three intentions, focusing on the brain to send the intention 
the thought out, and then tuning into the heart to pull the experience in, drawing it in with love. The first intentions were to, was to have a mystical experience where my soul leaves my body for 10 minutes and connect with the divine. While you send your thought out and draw the emotion in, you are feeling as if you were having that experience, living it and imagining how it could feel. The intention too was to fully heal and become whole. I was planning to, okay, so at this point I was falling asleep because when my handwriting gets so sloppy that I can barely read it, it's because I'm falling asleep in my bed as I'm trying to fill out my journal. So please bear with me. The intention, the second intention was to fully heal and become whole in my body. I wasn't planning to, but I misunderstood Dr. Joe and thought he asked us to tune into the second center, not the second intention, which is where my health issues are in the spine and the nerves that surround the spine and all that area. The moment I tuned into the second center, I immediately felt severe pain. I sat with it with the intention to release it. Then I had Dr. Joe say to tune into your second intention and that is why I chose the heal my body intention. My ears heard what they wanted to hear which was which has led me to this healing intention for the second one. Our third intention was to ask to tune into an opportunity that was just right for you. The moment he said it, my thought was immediately to set the intention to heal others to help people hear the dis-ease that was so immediate that I knew it was the right intention for me. So a little side note, um, my dream is to heal others. It's always been like that. And I think it's because of the work I've been doing on myself. And my partner does this really fun thing where when we meet new friends or we're just chatting, he always asks if your family was healthy, everybody was okay, all your friends were okay. And you were had the possibility possibility to have one magic power. What would it be? And everyone has their own thing. Some people want to fly. Some people want to be able to um, connect with the past or whatever people want to do. And mine is always: I just really want to heal others. My dream is to be able to have the strength and power to be to heal others. That's all I wish for. So doing this work with Dr. Joe has been great. And I didn't share it because it wasn't a really a meditation. But when I got there, I was not selected as a Healy. In my first week long, I was a Healy. So I'll explain more about it later. But in this one, I was a healer. And my old self was really saddened by it. And I even tried to put myself on a wait list. And the moment I did that, I was like, why am I doing this? The universe knows better. I've always wanted to heal others. And now I'm being given the opportunity and I'm trying to take it away from myself. What would I do it? Anyhow, I was a healer and it was amazing. It was, I'll get to that experience when we get to it. But it was so good. All right, the final meditation of this day, which I already lost count, can't remember, was the kaleidoscope. Um, in this meditation, you basically put yourself into a trance. It starts with the eyes closed, tuning into the heart, then we tune into the sixth center, center, the pineal gland, and Dr. Joe invites us to open our eyes to look at the moving kaleidoscopes. It's a fast way to go into trance and make the brain more suggestible. The bright colors of explosion get, get to you fast and you get a mini brain orgasm. This weird thing happened to me, which also happened at the last week long. The images on the screen split into two. And the one stays on the screen, while the second one I can move all the way to the side or on the ceiling and I can move it anywhere I want and I can still see every part of it crystal clear in the image. So the image is still clear, but it's not in front of me. It's on the side or on the wall, wherever I choose to put it. It is so, so weird and hard to explain, but it's also very cool. It's almost like I'm splitting the reality in different realities. The lying down was meant to slowly unwind us, but the convulsions, convulsions like the shaking from the, this meditation kept going and it almost felt like a mild version of being in a healing, healy cage. So when I had my 
healing experience and I was in one of these Healy cages. Um, yeah, it was quite intense and you shake and you vibrate and I got on the floor and it was a mini version of that. The shocks to the heart and the brain kept going and all of a sudden, I saw myself on the ceiling again, this time with one of Dr. Joe's nurses as researchers. I saw her up there. Don't don't want to don't need to add names, but I was up there on the ceiling with the Dr. Joe nurse and with all the divine beings that surround the room. I tell them I'm ready to join the army to heal people and go off straight to the man in the wheelchair that I was helping yesterday. There was this man that um, was trying at the end of the day needed to speak to some of the volunteers and couldn't get there with his wheelchair alone. So I went and tried to help him. And he's like, no, no, I'll stay here, wait for them to come. So I went to help him out with things. And in my meditation, I saw him. This gentleman had um, breathing support. He had tubes up his nose and on a wheelchair. And while I was in my meditation and I was up on the ceiling with um, Dr. Joe's nurses and researchers and all the divine beings, I saw him and I went to him and I removed his tubes to connect to his oxygen and heal his breathing and walking. I then moved to the other man with an oxygen tank that I met in the elevator more than once. At this point, I'm in tears of joys and gratitude, feeling that I am helping them heal. As I move to a third person, Dr. Joe calls us to come back to him in the 3D world. I was not ready and it took me a while as I didn't want to leave this beautiful space where I was allowed to heal and love all the people around me. So yeah, that was my first little taste of healing others. Not even with, not even trying to. I hadn't set the intention. It just happened out of nowhere and I loved it. I truly did. See you for the next day, which I still have. Don't remember what day we're on. <laughs> oh, don't forget, blah, 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 blah. don't forget to leave your comments and questions. I always get back to everyone personally for now. <laughs>